Hey everybody, this is Tara with the Painted Cicada and um, I am getting ready to teach this a time to gather. Um, if you need the tracer or supply list, it is available in guide six. Um, let me just pull myself up on my tech here so I can see what's going on. Let's see. Creative Party Weekend, where are you? Here we go. Oh, there I am. All right, so hello. I am so excited uh, for you to join me. Uh, did you guys see that alcohol ink cat? Wasn't that super fun? Um, okay, everybody's here. Hi, Mel. Hi, Kathy. Um, Mel, you do have to, um, let me see here. I am going live with StreamYard. If you have not joined somebody on StreamYard yet, um, you do have to grant them permission. So if you just open up a new tab, StreamYard.com slash Facebook, um, once you give that app permission, you'll never have to do that again. And everybody who, who uses it will be able to see your comments. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about me first. Um, so uh, I've been an art teacher and artist for a very long time. And I started the Painted Cicada several years ago. Um, I love art. I am super passionate about art. And um, when people ask me, uh, what is it about art that I love? And I just... For me personally, um, art can be life changing. You can use it to document things. Um, it can also be super healing. Um, I use it to express my feelings and emotions, or it can just just be fun. It's what we make it. Um, but to me, the best part about art uh, is that there's a room for everybody's voice at the table. Uh, so that's why I am crazy passionate about art. Um, hello, Carol. Hello, Laura. Oh, it's so nice to see everybody. Okay, I am going to get this camera off my face and we are going to get started. I've only got an hour here, so um, definitely uh, going to maximize my time. So this is what we are going to paint today. Um, so let me get this one out of the way. Um, Supplies. Let's talk about supplies. Um, you are going to need a canvas or a canvas board to paint on. Um, working on paper for this lesson is not going to work well because you need something that's not going to absorb. So um, UPO paper, canvas, canvas board will work great. Um, you're going to need some acrylic paint colors. All of the colors are available in the supply list guide six. Um, but all of the colors I suggest are just suggestions. So um, use what you have and hi, Carol, um, and, and make it your own. Um, I've got some paint brushes. Um, I, I almost always only use a, a few paint brushes. So I always say I have my mama, my daddy, and my baby brush here. I just use flats and then um, for lettering, vines, anything that requires detail work, I have um, a small and large round. So just grab some brushes. Uh, whatever brushes you have will work. Um, today you will need some rubbing alcohol. Uh, this is my secret um, to the fun um, texture that we're going to make today. Um, this I got at the dollar store. This is actually, it's got some... Um, um, it smells like mint. You don't need green. You don't need mint. I actually would have preferred not, but that's all they had. Um, and if you want it, there is an image to transfer. Um, I'm probably just going to go rogue with my pumpkin. Um, but if you need to use the transfer, you can put carbon paper underneath. Um, or if you chalk the back or pencil the back and trace it, it will transfer. Um, but, okay, um, 
let's get started, guys. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I want to throw down some brown for the background here. And I'm trying to look at my reference. Um, all right. So for the back, the two colors that I used were espresso and honey brown. And I just kind of created a gradient with those. Um, and I'm going to start, I'll start at the top and work down. Um, so I'm just going to throw some right here on my canvas. And I'm going to use my biggest brush. We're going to jump right in. So I'm so glad you guys are here with me today. If you're painting, I really hope you're shared in the group. That's my favorite part about teaching is seeing what everybody makes. And if you're working with a canvas, I always like to get my sides while I've got my those paint colors out. That way I don't have to try to match things up later. I just started and I'm already knocking stuff over. I am clumsy. So, how are you guys doing? Are you guys ready for fall? If you are ready for fall, throw throw an emoji or something in the in the chat box. I am definitely ready for fall. I will tell you that. All right, so I've got this honey brown, which is just a light light yellowy brown on top, and then I've got my espresso, which is my dark brown. I'm gonna put right across the bottom here. I don't need to clean off my brush because I'm gonna mix these two colors together. So, um, ooh, paint booger. So, no need to add in an extra step and clean off your brush, right? And when I work with acrylics, I tend to work very fairly quickly. Um, I have a more painterly style. I, I'm not real exacting. I don't go for realism. I go for fun. Um, I, f I find uh, my pieces turn out better when I don't stop and think too much. All right, so, oh yes, I've got some people ready for fall. I love this. Those fall emojis, they're making me happy. I think I'm in Cincinnati um, and it's like next week, we're supposed to get our first like really cool week. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna create the gradient. I've got light brown on the top. I've got dark brown on the bottom. Um, now I put some more dark brown here. I'm gonna grab some of this light brown. And right here in the middle, I'm just gonna bring these two colors together. You know, prim primarily, I want to cover up this white canvas background first, and then I'm just going to move some of that paint up, and then move some of this paint down. Keeping in mind um, as well, I'm going to have a big old pumpkin right in the middle, so I don't need this to be perfect in the middle. Most of that's going to be covered. I am absolutely a seasonal painter, and um, I am always inspired by the changing of the seasons, the turning of the wheel, whatever you call it. Um, but fall is my absolute favorite. Oh, you're from Northern Kentucky. Yay. So close. I can't see your name. If you are... Um, if this is your first time going live with somebody on StreamYard, um, you do have to give StreamYard permission or I can't see your name. It will show up kind of goofy. Let me show you what, what it looks like. So it just says Facebook user. 
but you're close. I would love to connect. Um, yay. Yay for Northern Kentucky. Yeah, I live in Harrison, so um, I'm not real far from Northern Kentucky. Ooh, from Oklahoma. I love hearing all the places everybody's from. <laughs> Yay for Skyline Chili. That's funny. I do really like I My husband always wants to go to Skyline, and I'm like, yeah, no. But I do like it sometimes. I, I actually really love living in Cincinnati. I love this area. All right. So the idea here for the background. Um, oh, we've got Florida, too. Um, oh, and Mississippi. This is exciting. Very cool. So we're just creating a gradient on the backgrounds. I use light brown and dark brown. Of course, you can go with any colors that you would like. Um, the idea here is just to um, create some visual interest. And then when you do a gradient, when you do darker at the bottom, it does make it look like there is um, more of a base for the pumpkin. All right, so let's see. I need this to dry for just a minute. Oh, Curry's from Dayton. This is so fun. Dayton is so close. I would love to connect with some of you guys. We actually, <laughs> we have a local group of, um, of art women who meet up regularly. So if you're close to Cincinnati, we should shoot me a message after this live is over. It would be fun to connect. Ooh, North Carolina. Yay. So yeah, I just uh, need this background to dry a little bit. Um, I'm going to zap it with my hair dryer here and move this along. I'm just going to turn it on low because I realize if you're painting with me at home, you might not have this option. There's no need to rush. We've got, we still have 45 minutes. We've got plenty of time. All right, so I've got my crazy background here, and um, the next step that I'm going to do is we are going to lay some color down on our pumpkin, and I'm going to use this Hauser light green. Um, any light green will work fine. Um, but I'm going to start my pumpkin with light green. So um, when pumpkins start to grow, they start green. Most pumpkins will start out green. They'll turn yellow and then they'll turn orange. So that's why I'm starting with green here. Um, and this will be kind of the bottom layer of that really funky um, spotty look that we're going to give our pumpkin. So if you are ready... Uh, I'm just going to take my mama brush, my middle brush here, and some green paint. And I'm just going to draw out the shape of this pumpkin. Uh, pumpkins are fairly easy, and I usually just start them off with a nice round midsection. 
Now the trick to uh, the texture that we're gonna do is to make sure that there's a um, nice dry, thick layer of acrylic. So I ensure that by making sure the background is done first, and then I add on the second layer of acrylic here. And I don't, I'm not worrying too much about my brown showing through a little bit. One layer is plenty for the pumpkin. All right, so once I have my, my midsection of my pumpkin, I'm just gonna curl some sections next to it. So um, this is pretty much it. And I am not worried about being exact. I'm just gonna add these sections on and then fill them in. Now I'm gonna give my pumpkins um, defining lines and all that good stuff later. I just need to lay down some color. I know y'all are talking about where you guys are all from. I love hearing about it. Tell me what your favorite fall thing to do is wherever you are. My favorite fall thing um, in Cincinnati to do, we have um, a sunflower farm um, nearby and I love to take the kids there and we go on a hayride and pick sunflowers and that's a lot of fun. All right, so we had our big oval in the middle. Now it looks like a pepper. We've got two, <laughs> two ovals on the side, but we need to make it look like a pumpkin. So I'm just gonna have kind of a smaller, half circle right here on the end. And this is where you can kind of make your, you know, if you want your pumpkin wider, you can swing it out a little bit. This is just kind of a quick, easy way to draw a pumpkin. <laughs> Order cider from Michigan. So, so Houston's a non-fall city, so I guess you don't get changing leaves. Oh, you don't get cider. That's sad, I love cider. See, I would have thought just, you know, that's something that the grocery stores would carry regardless of um, location. But I guess not. I don't know these things. Hello, Cassie, glad you can join us. Oh, Robin, you went on your first sunflower maze? Aren't they fun? I love sunflowers. Little fun fact about me, when I was a teenager, my nickname was Sunflower. And then it was like really long and obnoxious to say, and so people started calling me Sunny. And um, then it kind of became an inside joke with my friends. People would ask, well, why is your name Sunny? And my friends would say, it's um, meant to be ironic because she's so grumpy all the time. <laughs> so that nickname stuck, Sunny. I still have quite a few people in my life that call me Sunny. Yeah, Carol, you're right. The The grocery store cider is not the same. We have a friend um, who made like a homemade apple smasher grinder. I don't know. He makes cider every year. Um, 
And it's so good. And he doesn't add sugar or anything. It's just smashed apples. Oh, Susan, you're so lucky to have all those orchards. All right, now for this step, we do need our pumpkin to dry. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna blow him in the wind a little bit here. If he's wet, it kind of messes up the next step. So, ooh, now's a good time, I'll tell you. Um, so uh, what I do with uh, the painted cicada, I am, um, I'm a mixed media artist and I am an art journaler. And um, let me switch this over to my face for a minute while this is drying. Hello. Um, so I love to do mixed media, um, which is why um, I'm gonna, create this funky texture on this pumpkin today. Texture is something I love. Um, and I'm also an art journaler. So um, if you're interested in the painted cicada, you can always check me out. Um, my website is paintedcicada.com. Um, I also have a presence here on Facebook at Painted Cicada. Um, pretty much all my social media is the same, Painted Cicada. Um, but I do have an art journaling membership, um, which runs through Patreon. And I do have, um, starting in January, I'm going to have a painting the year membership um, on Patreon as well, um, because I love the changing of the seasons. I love to uh, just do fun acrylic painting. Um, so that's a little bit about me. And um, let's see, what else can I tell you? Oh. Oh, I'll tell you this. Um, if you are interested in signing up for any of my online classes, um, I do have a coupon code for everybody for joining me here um, uh, for the um, Creative Party Weekend. And so I'm super excited that you guys are here. If you go to my website, you can use the coupon code CPW uh, for 50% off all of my online classes. Um, and that's... Uh, that coupon code would be good for a week. And then let me take this goofy thing off. I'll switch my camera back the other way. All right, for the sake of time, I am gonna zap this guy just to make sure he's dry. Yeah, let's get back to the good stuff here. I'm here to paint, not sell. Let's be creative. I'm super excited to show you this texture. All right. All right, so what I need now is I'm going to get a little cup of alcohol. And um, rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, will, any kind will work, um, as long as it's more than, I would say, 60%. Um, most is 60 to 90. And what you're going to need to do, I like to use these little cups, but you can use, well, these are kind of messy. Let me get me here. You can use just a paint tray. Um, all right, so I'm going to get my spiced pumpkin or my orange, whatever color you're going to use. Thank you, Kathy. Whatever color you're going to use for your pumpkin. And you are going to want to add some water. I'm just going to mix my paint water in there. Um, maybe like 25% water, 75% paint-ish. But you want it to be nice and fluid because the reaction between the water and the paint is what you want to see. All right, so I've got these two things ready and I like to have them ready so I can just, you know, kind of go. Um, so I need an extra paintbrush. 
I'm going to use that to dip in my alcohol. And so what I'm going to do here is we're just going to take kind of a, I'm going to work left to right. I'm going to paint with this. Now this needs to stay wet in order for it to work. So I'm going to do one section at a time and I'm not going to be very exacting with my pumpkin. That's okay. We can fix our edges later. And then I'm going to take this alcohol and kind of splatter it or you can even like touch in little drops with your brush. And it's just gonna create these fun little smudges. I actually think I might need to mix a little bit more water in there. Just cause that's hard to see on camera. Oops, did I go crazy with water? Maybe I went a little crazy, we'll see. You want it to be really thin, like melted ice cream, really fluid. So let me do another section here and then I will lift it up and show you on camera a little bit closer. So I just work section by section. Oh yeah, that works nice. So I splatter some small splatters and then I'm gonna to touch in some big spots, big splotches. And what happens is the alcohol is gonna dry much faster than that paint. So let me bring this up to the camera. So what happens is you get these weird um, kind of round texture things. Um, and so it's going to, um, and you can do this with any colors, right? Like it's not just a pumpkin thing. So use this technique on whatever you like really. Um, but whatever color you put underneath that pumpkin is going to be what shows through. So if I put yellow, um, it would be more subtle. I use this light green. So that's what's gonna show through is this light green. And you have to work quickly because if your acrylic paint dries, it's not gonna work. So that's why I do one section at a time here. Oops, what did I do with my, my dot brush? How do you lose a paintbrush when you don't even get up? Oh, it's in my water. That's the story of my life. Lose, lose stuff without even leaving my seat. And so this pumpkin is just, um, we work one section at a time, adding in this, this wet mixture. And if you find it's not working, it's just not wet enough. You just need to make sure that you've got enough water mixed in there and that you've got, um, that you're working quickly with the alcohol. And I like to, to get some small ones um, by tapping my brush and I like to get a couple like really big goofy looking ones in there. Cause I'm that person that likes the pumpkins with all the warts.
So it was kind of a nice, um, it was planned out nicely how it worked out to have somebody who was working with alcohol ink right beforehand because we've got this fun alcohol texture. Okay, let me raise this up. Probably should take this off before I dump that all over my computer. <laughs> so this is what happens when you have that color, that dry acrylic underneath, and then you put the wet acrylic on top and you tap alcohol. The closer I get to my camera, the, the more odd the color looks, but, but it's really fun to do. I love splashing and um, splatter and, and spray. So um, that's how I kind of get those fun designs on there. And um, yeah, Beth, you could totally try it with clouds. I mean, this is a fun effect to do. Um, I mean, you can add, use this to add texture on, you know, all kinds of things because circles are pretty, um, you know, neutral. You can use them for a lot of different things. Um, and I think what I'm going to do just to add a little more pizzazz is I've got this I'm going to grab some, this is cadmium orange. It's kind of a red orange. And I'm going to, I'm just going to add a little bit of splatter because I don't know, because I like to go rogue sometimes and just change the plan. So I'm just going to water this down and then just tap a little bit. I just think this pumpkin needs a little, a little something extra. I don't know if that's even showing up on camera. In person it is. But because it's orange on orange, it's not the easiest to see. So there is some, some darker orange splatter on there. And I'm just going to put this alcohol away. Now I need most of my pumpkin to dry, but while, while I've got it out here, um, look at my color list. I have to cheat. Um, I'm going to mix a little bit of this yellow, mm, yellow, maybe not yellow, honey brown, um, into this watered down uh, pumpkin color here. I just want to make that a smidge darker. Just add a touch of that cad orange in there. But I just want to darken it up a little bit so I can come back and do those lines. Oh my goodness, I'm breaking my paintbrushes. All right, so I'm just using a round brush. Um, I've got this orange that I watered down. And I'm gonna just add some, I don't wanna waste it, so I'm just adding some acrylic to it to darken it up a little bit. So you can add brown, a little orange, like whatever you've got on hand, um, just to, to take the color down a shade. You just want it a little bit darker. And what I'm gonna do now that I've got this darker colors, I'm just going to add some lines right where my pumpkin sections meet. Because those sections are a little darker. And that's also going to help define this pumpkin here. And I want to cover up that green, so I'm not worried about the paint being wet because I'm not painting the inside. I'm just going around the outside edges and those lines. And that's just going to clean it up a little bit. And as we're working here, just be careful not to put your hand in the wet pumpkin there. It'll take a few minutes to dry. I'm going to add on a stem. I'm just going to use my espresso, my dark brown here. I don't even need to mix it up with anything. Um, 
And for my stem, what I am gonna do is, um, I wanna go on either side of this middle bump here. So to the right and to the left of that, to those bumps. And then I'm just gonna kinda keep pulling up until, until they meet. My sample, the stem went to the right. This one here, this one wants to go to the left a little bit. And I'm going to fill it in just solid for now. Oops, got a little orange in there. That's okay. Just blend it in. Give that a little stem there. All right. Now while this pumpkin is drying, I'm gonna keep working on the rest of my painting here, just since we've got a limited amount of time. Um, so for the next step, I'm going to pull out a liner brush, which is just a really thin uh, round. Sorry, when I talk a lot, I need to have some water. And then I'm just going to get some blackout. And I'm going to water this down um, just a little bit enough. Um, you want it, you don't want to add water like we did earlier. You just want maybe a drop or two just to make it nice and fluid so your line doesn't break up when we move it. Um, yeah. So we're not going for real thin like we did with our pumpkin. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make these big swags across the top here. And there's no rhyme or reason, they're just kind of fun little swoops. And I have my stars hanging from these. You can have a lot or a little. I just like to put three or four of these up there. Oops. Now look what I did. So now you can see what I do during emergencies. <laughs> I have a stash of baby wipes right here. For any time I mess something up. But the beauty of acrylic painting is that you can always add layers. So clean it up and move on. All right. So once I have my swoops at the top, I don't know what those are, maybe garlands. I'm going to add some stars dangling down. So I'm just making a wavy line here. I'm going to have three, three of these babies. And I am not going to outline my stars first. I'm going to do that last. All right. I'm going to put my stars down with yellow ochre first. And this is a nice trick. If you are ever using metallic, metallics always look best when you have um, an undercoat first. So I'm going to do my undercoat 
with the stars in this yellow ochre. And I'm just sketching because I know I can come through with my gold and fix it a little bit. And I'm going to put a black outline and that'll fix it a little bit as well. Oops. And this painting um, in my original, I went a little like whimsical, folk arty, like my stars and my crow were not, you know, perfect on purpose. That's how I kind of like things. So I'm not worried too much about those stars. All right, so we've got lots of layers in this painting, so I'm just moving right along just to make sure we finish on time. So the next thing I'm going to do is pull out my Mississippi mud, which is just a light brown. And I'm going to add just a little fun texture, uh, not texture, but some fun lines on this stem here. I'm just going to use my liner brush and bring some of this down. And maybe some up here too, because you know they get all dry and weird on the ends. And while I've got my liner brush out, um, well, I don't know that my pumpkin is dry enough, but I can. I can add a little outline here. And some lines as well with the black. All right, in order for me to move on, I do have to cheat and use my heat gun. So give me a second, I do need to dry up my pumpkin. It is time for this baby to dry up. All the paint where the alcohol was, was dry. But my, my dark orange lines are not. And I have another star to add down here with my little crow. And I've got some vines. We've got work to do. All right. I hate cheating like that on the live, but got to keep moving if we want to get done in an hour. All right. So the next step here is we need to add our little crow. Um, now I did give you, well, we need to add our vines and then our crow. Um, I did give you a tracer if you want to trace this baby on, um, but I'll show you a real easy way to make these um, pumpkin vines. Um, where's my, so this is just my really fine liner brush and um, I'm gonna put some of this I've got Hauser light green and Hauser medium green. Any light green um, and medium green or light green and dark green will work. You just want them to be two different colors. I might actually darken up my dark green just a smidge. Use whatever colors you like. There's no rules here. All right. 
So I'm gonna come through and make my vines. And for every vine I make, I'm just gonna do two lines. I'm gonna do one with my light green and one with my dark green. So I'm gonna start up here by my stem. I want there to be some, some curly cues here. And I find the longer your brush, so I have kind of a, this is hard to see from far away, but this uh, liner brush is long. Um, the longer my brush, the easier it is for me to make those fun little curly strokes. So I did one with my bright green, and I'm gonna go right over the top with my dark green. And so I'm gonna do that with every one. So I want maybe two over here. So I did one with the light. And one with the dark. Maybe down here I'll start with the dark. And then I'll come back with the light. It doesn't matter the order that you do it. We're just having fun. And it just adds variation in that line. All right, so those are my viney vines. All right, next I'm going to grab my, I use my baby brush for this. Um, and again, I'm going to use two colors. So um, my, first, my first color here, I'm gonna go dark. And for the pumpkin leaves, um, pumpkin leaves are kind of, um, I don't know, they're kind of bumpy, but you can have your leaves going any which way you want. So I'm gonna put one here. And basically I start kind of with a heart shape and I get smaller as I go down. Another little heart shape and then a heart shape into a point. I'm gonna wipe off that brush, dip it right in the green and then I'm gonna just fill in the green, pulling in that edge. So I'm just pulling the edge in and then pulling the edge in and that'll mix up the color a little bit. And then I'll come through after I'm done and just put a line right down the middle. So again, that is kind of a heart shape. Another heart shape. And then your heart point. And while it's wet, I'm just gonna pull in some of that dark color right towards the middle from both sides into the lighter color.
once I finish with those lines, I can just come back through um, with my liner brush and my round and then just add a little line down the middle. You can always touch up those edges if you need to. Right. I'm going to let those babies dry. Another quick step. We're going to add some of this um, gold right on top of that yellow ochre for the stars. It really makes those stars pop. Um, I don't need to use a lot, so I'm going to use it actually right out of this container here with my little baby brush. You can use a round too, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, and because we put that yellow ochre down, the gold is really gonna stand out. Otherwise, metallic gold is usually, um, well, metallic colors in general are usually pretty transparent on that first coat. So, can you see that? It just lights up. So I just add it in there, knowing I'm gonna give it a black outline. So I just kind of tap it in there. Oh, and I totally forgot to do my crow. I'm such a goob. There'll be another star later. Let's see how those kind of, you can see I'm reflecting the light there. They kind of pop once you put that gold on there. And then I've got my black that I mixed out just a little thin earlier. And I'm just gonna give these stars a nice little outline. All right, so those stars are done. I've got six minutes. Can we put a crow on there in six minutes? All right, because I'm strapped for time here, I am gonna use a little bit of chalk to transfer this baby. So, and you can place your crow wherever you like him. I'm gonna put mine right there. And so what I did was I just scratched some chalk on the back of this just to help me get some lines on there. Because I can feel myself rushing now that our time is getting close to being over and I don't want to mess up the crow. This would be something even, um, you know, I mentioned I love doing mixed media. So if you do mixed media, you could even cut yourself out a little crow and glue them on. Here's the, he's holding a, Another little star there. I'm just going to fill him in with black.
Oh my goodness. Wouldn't it be a painting of mine if I didn't mess something up? All right. Oh, thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, it comes right together at the end here. Um, I am going to keep on working. Um, I will throw up my website here. Um, I do have a coupon code just specific for um, the Creative Party Weekend. So if you have participated in Creative Party Weekend, um, I have a 50% off coupon for all of my online classes. Um, that'll be good up until a week from today. Um, so if you are interested in doing any online lessons, uh, you can check that out. There's my website and the coupon code. So I'll throw that up for you while I'm, oops, finishing up here. I definitely want to show you guys the fun little details I throw on this pumpkin. I've got three minutes. Can I finish up? Who knows? All right. So what I like to do once I get my painting pretty much finished um, is come through and I like to add just these little waves and fun just kind of around here whoop 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 I just think this adds kind of a fun whimsical little so I don't want my pumpkin to feel straight and boring I just want him to feel kind of goofy so maybe I'll even add in some swooshes. So there you go. Towards the end here, we just add some finishing touches. If you want, um, there are words on the tracer where you can add your own fun little saying there in the middle. But um, to be respectful of time, I am going to finish up here um, so we can move on after um, this. Uh, stay tuned. We have uh, Ginger up next, and she is going to paint um, a really cool um, gather painting. Um, so thank you for joining me for a time to gather here. Let me switch up my camera so I can say goodbye. Um, it was so nice meeting you all. Check me out at The Painted Cicada. I love to paint with you. Um, here is the finished piece, A Time to Gather. And stick around, uh, refresh in the group so you can see Ginger's lesson uh, coming up here in just a few minutes. Bye-bye, everybody.